it's typically not safe for men to share. And the reason why you don't know they're growing is because they're not going to share that with you because if they share something with you, a lot of times it gets weaponized or used against them later. Um, it's like, even in this, the one of the main reasons we got married is because I really appreciated that I had a safe space to share stuff with, with her. And even then, it still got weaponized against me later on, and we had to sort that out and, and keep working on it. So what can women do to have their men meet them? One, they can stop nagging and stop, you use the word controlling, the, the different aspects of their relationship and create a space for their men to open up and share vulnerably with them. That was Sierra and Rano, and this is episode 82. Welcome to the Brave Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Tanya Lin, founder of Sistership Circle and author of Open Your Heart and The Art of Leading Circle. I'm the mother of two girls and eight on the Enneagram, aka The Challenger, happily married to my business partner, Brent, love connecting with nature and have put in well over 10,000 hours circling with other women. On this podcast, we will explore how to embody the brave woman so that you can take action on your dreams and desires, unapologetically speak your truth, and live life on your own terms. Grab a seat and a cup of tea and let's get started. I have with me today one of my favorite couples, Rano and Sierra. Yay! Aren't they yeah. cute? Welcome, guys. I'm so happy to have you. Likewise. I know. <laughs> oh, favorite couples. <laughs> and the reason is, is you have been together forever, and I've known you forever. And you stand for couples and you have a community for couples and all the things. And so I'm excited for us to dive into relationships and really having your man meet you as a woman, because that is a big thing in our community as, you know, women, spiritual women growing and thriving and really wanting to be met by their partner. So let's start with your story. You have such a sweet story. Um, and then, you know, how, how also you developed Eden, your community. Do you want me to kick it off with the timeline and yeah. pass it to you? For- yeah, that sounds All right. great. <laughs> um, so we have known each other for about 45 years. Mm-hmm. And we've been really close friends for about 20 or so years. We've been business partners for 16 years. And we've been married for uh, be 14 in a week. Uh, and uh, we, we've had to learn how to do relationship in multiple different ways. And yeah. when we went from really close friends to besties to then business partners, we nailed all that. We got it down good. But as soon as it went romantic, we realized, oh, what's happened? Like all these things are in the space now that weren't there the last new week. dynamics, new dynamics. And so we recognized, mm-hmm. Oh, there's something that happens when two people come together in a romantic relationship and um, bonds happen and sex happens and all those things, something changes chemical and, and, and just in our bodies. And so we have to relate to each other differently. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the, the seed of what um, is now Eden world. And um, when that happened for us, because, you know, like the day before we got physically intimate, we're like, nothing you could do. You're my buddy. There's nothing that you could say or do or have me be upset with or anything. We're like, we're buddies, yeah, right? We nurse each other over former relationships, like that kind of mm-hmm. thing, you know, but. But as soon as we did get that hormone involved, those chemicals, the oxytocin, all the things, the sex bonding, whatever, it literally did change. And all my baggage from my past relationships came up as it is. Yep. Moved right in. <laughs> moved, just like moved right in. I was like, this is fascinating. So what we recognize, as well as we did have some interesting power dynamics, is he started working for my company back in the day. So I was his boss for a period of time. I still feel like I am your boss. <laughs> more in the bedroom now than in the boardroom, but yeah. <laughs> and um, we realized that okay, this is different. This is something that we need to work with, both the power dynamics and this new 
thing that's in the space here between us. And we didn't really need therapy. We didn't need coaching necessarily. But what we found was just by sharing what was up with us with other couples that we would meet along the way. Successful, committed mm -hmm. couples that were like in, in relationship to, you know, for the long haul. Yeah. Long-term committed couples or married couples, they would give us amazing advice and they would relate to things or they would relate to something that we're experiencing and all of a sudden see their situation with a new lens. And that got us thinking, we're like, hmm, there's something to this couple to couple peer support thing. And it's different than therapy because the therapist, usually it's one therapist, you know, it talking would be like to this, you would be our therapist and you'd tell us all the things to do and be like, okay. And then we'd go try to do it. And then a week or a month later, we'd come back and be like, okay, we tried to do it, but it didn't really work. And you're like, oh, go try this. So it's very transactional. It doesn't really like support on the court, like the relationship in practice when you're with other couples surrounded by other couples talking with other couples in that the are doing practice, relationship yeah. it, it, you can move a lot quicker yeah so that got us thinking and because we were also entrepreneurs and we were going to a lot of different masterminds and experiencing you know the power of that for business we thought that could really work for relationship and couples and i think it would fast track and so we looked around and we didn't see it existing and so well let's let's form it let's create the first couple to couple peer-to-peer -peer mastermind yep. for, you know we married all the best things of business and the best things of relationship and put them all together and voila eden world was born <laughs> <laughs> yeah and what i came in october 2020 it was actually our anniversary weekend that we came to our first <laughs> online eden event and we had missed the live ones because you had gone virtual because of covid yeah. um but you started with these live events right yeah yeah, we started with live events. That was the whole mission of the company because getting couples together to interface is really was the magic sauce. Um, and then COVID hit, everything shut down. And we thought, will this business survive? Can we translate the magic that would happen in the in-person experiences to an online experience? And we're like, well, we don't really have a choice. So let's, let's see what happens. Let's do it. And sure enough, it, I mean, COVID allowed it to flourish in the sense that people were hungry for connection. Uh, but the magic of just the, the, the vulnerable space, the authentic space, the relating space was really, really, really well, well done on, on zoom. And um, we brought all the fun and the play and the dress up and the, you know, the games and, and yeah, we made it very, uh, yeah, very much like it was an in-person experience. It, it's the it's the permission that we give that mm -hmm. we allow couples to have because most societies, most people that I've talked to, I was just on the phone yesterday with a guy from Ireland, and he said, "Oh, we don't talk about our relationships. That's not a good thing." And I was like, "Well, yeah, but like, how's it working out for you?" And they're like, "Well, not too well. We you know keep it quiet. We keep it that." So we give permission to share the not so great parts of your relationship and also celebrate the great parts of your relationship as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. I mean, for us, because part of the structure is the, um, the couples councils. Mm -hmm. And so having three couples and a council and for us having our couples council that we had for two years, maybe right. longer, three years, we had wow. ours for three years and we all said how powerful it was to witness each other um, in the light and the shadow and, um, and just the power of being able to show up in that peer space to, yeah, share the stuff that's not working. Mm -hmm. oh, it's just, yeah, so powerful. So what have you learned mm -hmm. from really holding the space for so many couples? I mean, that weekend I went, there were over a hundred people there. I mean, you've yeah. worked with hundreds and hundreds of couples or seen different dynamics. Um, yeah. What, what are some of the things that you've discovered? Well, the first thing that we've discovered is that couples have the same problems. There's patterns, yeah, nobody's, right? Nobody's special. Nobody's special. <laughs> 
there's, you you know, everybody thinks that they might have a little different of a flair or unique way that their background or history might, you know, pertain to it. But really, if we could break it down to, we, we joke, we're like, oh, that's pattern number 37 mixed with a little bit of pattern number 12. <laughs> and a little bit of pattern 265. That's And throw in the seven year pattern. Oh, yeah. Those are, yep. <laughs> So it's it helps to really normalize that um, yeah. there are stages and phases and human relational dynamics that just simply surface and happen within a committed partnership or any partnership really, um, family dynamics too. But um, you know, and if we can say, oh yeah, you too, uh, me too, okay, this is how we have solved it or resolved it you know what how have you done that um it just it it's like a i like to call it like, it's like relationship hacking right it's the fast track to getting to past the point of you know trigger because you can easily see what you look like as reflected in another couple and you're like oh is that what that looks like when i do that to you got it i'm not gonna do that anymore versus him saying you always do this thing to me <laughs> I'm what's like, your problem what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what do you mean but then as soon as you can see it um i think it yeah and understand it or have the wisdom that somebody else shares their shortcut um it's just yeah it's yeah. very powerful having so. it reflected back is key yeah yeah, yeah. can you give an example of one of these patterns like one of the top ones top of mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can give you a couple different ones. What, one yeah. pattern that pe <laughs> people have heard a lot of, I'll just quickly mention this one. There's mm -hmm. a thing called the seven year itch. Like you may have heard of this. And what yeah. we've seen now mm -hmm. is it happens every seven years. And there's a lot of different seven year cycles that happen in our lives. But in relationship, the seven, seven years in, 14 years in, so on and so forth, there's like a a shift that happens. There's something that happens in our systems in our, and a lot of times that's when people start to wander or that's when they grow apart from question each other things. or question things. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, that's a pattern that's just part of the relational path. And knowing that you can go into the seven years of your marriage or commitment or whatever um, with eyes wide open, and then you can shift that. So that's like a big general broad stroke one. Yeah. Um, and then I would say um, some of the smaller, but very, um, intense patterns that couples deal with is the feeling not heard, not listened to, or mm -hmm. talked over. The make, make wrong is a big one too. A make wrong pattern is a big wrong or somebody, it's just how we say it. And we tend to say it in a way that makes the other person wrong. Rub Literally. their nose in their shit versus, you know, like that, that kind of thing. Right. Which then, you know, is a basic communication breakdown pattern. Um, a lot of these are in the community, you know, people say communication is everything in relationship, but there's so many different ways that the communication goes sideways or awry. Um, another one is thinking that, you know, what your partner means, having, thinking you're having the same conversation, but you're actually approaching it from two different perspectives and really not at all having the same conversation. The biggest one for us around that was around our sex and intimacy. As mm -hmm. I mentioned, we're really good at bi being business partners and friends, but we have to work at our intimacy because that was like the last thing in our relationship and mm -hmm. we default to friends easier. Mm -hmm. So for the longest time, we kept missing around this thing. And, and I was like, I just want to, I just want to be more erotic. And she thought that the word erotic meant pornographic. And yeah, more sex oriented. So she was constantly like pushing against it. And I'm like, man, it doesn't get any more beautiful and poignant and like connected than erotic. Like, yes, sex. Yes, th those things. But I'm not talking about porn where we're just, you know, let's whip off our clothes and, you know, bend <laughs> over a counter and, you know. You know, all the stuff, well, well, you, you know, or I'm I know. not into that at times. No, but like you got to warm up to it where erotic is like, let's light some candles. Let's, let's more on the central, the central side of it. Mm. So once we finally figured out 10 years in that there was, yeah. that it was just a miss in understanding what the actual word meant, it changed everything. Mm -hmm. And so couples all the time are thinking they know what they're actually talking about. But unless you go that step deeper and that, mm -hmm. that layer deeper, you, you could be missing each other for the simplest little things and not even know it. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> yes. That would, I would say that's our, one of our breakdowns, of course, as being in that pattern of not really, or misinterpreting the other person. So yeah. thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, we have a lot of 
women in this community who are um, spiritually evolving, mm-hmm. doing the work, finding their purpose, right? Mm-hmm. And perhaps they were in a more traditional setting before. Mm-hmm. And so here they come, uh, you know, <laughs> coming out of the closet. Yeah. And their man is doing the same job, not, maybe not doing the spiritual thing. Um, Mm -hmm. and so there's like this kind of a, a rub of like, Hey, I'm starting to find my voice. I'm starting to step into my power. Yeah. I'm different now. Mm -hmm. How do we have women meet or feel met by their man as they are spiritually evolving? Mm -hmm. That is a great question. And, uh, this is an entire course. I know. (laughs) And and a dilemma too, right? One of our taglines in Eden is either you're growing together or you're growing apart. Mm -hmm. And it does tend to happen a lot that women will do a lot of the growing that you're describing and their men are, are not necessarily not willing to, but haven't been invited in, in a way that speaks to them. Um, and also, you know, hasn't really like a lot of the growing that some women do, there's no, there's no space for their man in that, which, what, which is what makes Eden really special because it's a place where couples come and they can do the growth together with other couples. Right. So having, yeah. and, and all the guys that we've talked to that were like, I ain't doing that. Love it. So it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a good space. Mm-hmm. It is a good space, but it's all in the approach. I think, you know, if, I think another pattern in relationship tends to be that I'm doing all the work. You're not growing. Even, you know, even in our dynamic that happened because I was doing a bunch of work and I was feeling evolved and I was getting all powered and powered in my it's, voice and all the things. Typically and- to the women in the relationship that aren't seeing their men grow because we grow differently. It looks differently for us. Everyone's individual mm-hmm. as well, but it looks very different how women grow and how men grow or heal. Women tend to heal in groups together. Men tend to heal and grow alone by themselves with challenge and things like that. Not that they don't do it in groups, but it just looks different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that, yeah, go ahead. I'll say that, um, I mean, this was, this was me and Brent. And the big thing that I caught is I'm saying, I'm doing all this work on myself. You're not. And he's like, what are you talking about? I am. Here's the things that I'm doing. And that's exactly what you're talking about is like, we, I have a, it goes back to that communication, like miss the misinterpreting. It doesn't have to look the exact same. And men are men and women are different. That's one of the things that I love about Eden is you have the couples things and then the women go off and the men Mm -hmm. go off. Yeah. Right. Because yep. we are growing differently. Totally. And so as soon as I stopped judging him and saying, oh, he is growing. It just isn't the things that I'm thinking he's growing in exactly. and really focus on the things that he was growing in. Yep. I can relax, like let go of my control and let go of my judgment and open mm-hmm. up the space for him to actually come into my space, right? Because yes. um, I was, I was putting that barrier up because I was saying you're not doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, make wrong. That, yep, that and that is so classic and so typical. So any woman listening, really think about this: Is that something that might be happening in your relationship if you're relating to what we're saying here? And if so, then the invitation is to get curious, to set some sacred space, and to. Um, get clear on what it is that you need specifically and how that might be able to be um, communicated or articulated or brought forth and or giving your partner the accolades and acknowledgement, like the old attaboy, you know, like, hey, I see this. I see you doing this. I am, you know, appreciating this thing and draw it out of them versus the I'm doing it all and you're not, you know, <laughs> that doesn't really work for anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A, a big one too, that I think is really important. And if I was talking to de- the guys, I would have a different conversation of how they can show up differently. But since we're talking to your brave women here, mm-hmm. it's typically not safe for men to share. And the reason why 
you don't know they're growing is because they're not going to share that with you. Because if they share something with you, a lot of times it gets weaponized or used against them later. Um, it's like, even in this, the one of the main reasons we got married is because I really appreciated that I had a safe space to share stuff mm -hmm. with, with her. And even then it still got weaponized against me later on. And we had to sort that out and, and keep working on it. So what can women do to have their men meet them? One, they can stop nagging and stop, you use the word controlling the, the different aspects of their relationship and create a space for their men to open up and share vulnerably with them. Because I'm, I'm learning 15 years in, a lot of personal growth work. Um, I've done a lot of women's empowerment work as well. So I very much, as much as a, a, a dumb guy can understand the feminine, I, I understand it well for, for that. And still, like I'm learning that if I share with my wife, it helps her relax. It helps her trust me more. It helps her feel connected to me. It helps her understand me better, mm -hmm. but it still takes prodding, prompting, encouragement, and, uh, and, um, and listening, pausing. Yeah. Giving me the space because it takes longer, mm -hmm. like however long you're giving and you're like, oh my dear God double it and then double it again. And then when you say, oh dear God, is he gonna give it even more time? And then you'll actually get it from your man. And it'll shorten over time, but it takes us a while to really get through the layers of our mind to get into the feeling body state and really dive down in. And if you're not patient and you're like, I'm growing and you're not, or you're faster, women are just faster at these things. We're way faster at a whole bunch of other things, but not here. And so it's how do we co-create and how do you actually give the space and the breath and the time? If you're, if lastly, like if you're, if your man is really a good man and he's committed and I'm assuming that you know what the difference is, um, because if you're in a bad relationship, it's never going to happen. So don't, don't bother. Don't waste your time and don't create these ideas and patterns and stuff that's never going to work. But if you have a guy that truly loves you and is willing to meet you in any way, mm -hmm. it's really on you to create the space for them to be able to meet you and mm -hmm. go at their pace to meet you. It may take several years for them to meet you, but if you're patient and you're open and you're tracking and you're offering a space to share, you'll be surprised at how fast we can, we can track. Yeah. And I want to add one thing to that too, because if you're questioning, is this partnership right for me? Have I outgrown it or any of those thoughts that might be present? is, is this person still somebody that you are willing to, um, you enjoy their company enough, they're willing to grow enough, um, and they're open-minded enough, then, then just keep encouraging them. Keep but, doubling down. Mm -hmm, exactly. Like, ours has only gotten better. And we've had many times throughout the years where we're like, I don't know if this is the right thing. If we did the right thing, maybe we should move on. Mm -hmm. But the key is I normal. genuinely like him and know that I wouldn't, Really, I'm going to do the work with somebody no matter what. This guy is doing the work and I like him. <laughs> I like yeah, him. For the most part. Yeah, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> Almost always, except when I'm really annoyed. But that's that that's only, her own thing. That's anyway. my own thing. <laughs> Unless I'm annoying, but, <laughs> which isn't that often. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> well, you two definitely laugh together a lot. And I know that we that's a laugh. big <laughs> thing is, <laughs> is creating that levity in the relationship. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that's what, <laughs> what you said is exactly what Brent says. It's not safe right now, you know, and now he has the language to be able and the awareness um, from doing the work. And it's like, yes, he's doing the work. He can mm -hmm. actually articulate that he's not feeling safe right now. You know, Tanya, come on, like give the guy some credit. So <laughs> I just, I love all yeah. that. And that's such a great reminder for me mm -hmm. to keep breathing and giving him, you know, double, triple, quadruple the amount of space to be able to open up and feel safe. It's so tough. Yeah. I wish I could go faster. So but... tough. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, I think a really great place for couples to start is um, living a principle-based relationship. And that's one of the big things with Eden is you have these beautiful principles, you have these values, um, and it's something that you can then take into your relationship. Can you talk a little bit about that? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the principles are something that we can all orient around and give us a place of 12 ways of relating when it gets tricky. Um, And amongst the principles too, we have four pillars that we apply the principles to, and those are how they apply to ourself, our sovereignty, our unity. So our coupleship, our relationship, community, that could be family, work, you know, your local, whatever, um, even your soul family, whatever, and then humanity. And so we take those 12 principles and it's, they're basically like a framework for better relating for humanity period. Mm -hmm. And they apply really well to your relationship. Um, because a lot of times the patterns of our trauma can have us hold back and not share things or, um, so we have a principle, one of them is all the way through. And that means that, okay, if this is like, we hear this, the pebble in the shoe argument, right? Well, you keep having the same argument or you keep bringing the same thing up. I'm like, well, because it hasn't been taken all the way through. There's something that's still in the space or in the emotional realm or something that still hasn't been fully addressed. <clears throat> and if we commit to that principle that we're going to take it all the way through as a couple, then we know that, okay, so something's up again. That means we haven't taken it all the way through. So it gives a language. It gives sort of a moral compass. It, it aligns values. It gives a framework and it gives tools to being able to get to the other side of some of the places that many couples get stuck very easily. Yeah. What would you add? Anything? Well, our number one principle is relationship is our North star. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we start. If it's, if you're not in a committed relationship, whether that's like, for instance, the, the three of us or the four of us with Brett, like we, we are all in a committed friendship. And so that's a version of using that as a community lens of relationship as our North star. So like, how do we hold our friendship, that relationship as sacred and as something that, you know, we want to care about each other and for cultivate and, and cultivate. And then same with the, the unity aspect, like how do we hold our relationship as sacred and as something that's valuable? And then how do I hold my relationship with myself as something that's valuable? So relationship is your North star using that through those different lenses of uh, pillars helps us understand how we can relate to ourselves and each other. And the, the other 12 are all equally as valuable of how you pull it inward, how you move it outward so that you can, you know, spatially move around this planet and interact with humans in this crazy world uh, in a much more uh, simple loving. way and mm-hmm. loving, caring mm-hmm. way. Kind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. An evolutionary. Love that. And so you have these principles on the website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone we'll wants to go sure look. That... Yep. 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 They would just yeah, click on ethos yep and it's got our right on the we'll, we'll put that in the show and, notes so cool. if you want Perfect. to see these principles um and and be able to look at that you can mm-hmm. um yeah you can go check that out so cool mm-hmm. um yeah wow so it's important for us to give our man some space <laughs> and starting to live by principles and have a north star for your relationship mm-hmm. i love that having that community peer to peer support it's just invaluable um yeah so how does someone find out about eden and you have a free gift mm-hmm. for everyone today i do Ooh. <laughs> um, well, one we we put together um the principles in a format it's like a beautiful 25 page or more um, guidebook, guidebook Digital that you guidebook. can go through and check it out and read all of those. Mm-hmm. Also, you want to share about this new one that we created as well? The sacred space or which one? Well, the... that, that too. Yeah. And then we'll give you a, our sacred space guide as well, which is we have a little, basically a relational upgrade package that we put together. Specific. Yeah. Specifically mm-hmm. for your, mm-hmm. for your crew. Cause we mm-hmm. love you and mm-hmm. we, um, we want to make sure that they're supported. Um, in the sacred space guide that uh, that's the format that we use to check in with each other Mm. to create that space and that safe space for either of us to share what's Mm -hmm. going on whether that's a positive thing or a negative thing that you're wanting to change or fix or you know um, unearth in the relationship Mm -hmm. and it walks you through the steps and the process of how to do that because Mm -hmm. most people the reason that they get in conflict is Mm. they do like drive by trying to fix things (laughs) 
yeah. instead of actually saying, hey, I value you, I value us, I value our relationship, and I value our connection. So why don't we take some time and sit down with one another and have a real adult heart-to-heart -heart conversation mm -hmm. about what's going on for us and then how we can meet each other and solve this so we can get back to loving each other and back to building our businesses or growing our careers or growing our family from a loving place instead of like, yeah, you did this thing to me, blah, 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 and just walk away and just throw this out. It's, it's just, ugh. it's like, we, let's be adults here, folks. Yeah. Let's and the up. more regularly you connect in sacred space, the less you're going to have to connect in sacred space because you're from a rupture or a blowout. So <clears throat> it's kind of like a maintenance practice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we also um, just recently put together this thing called the five minute fix. And mm -hmm. it's uh, some of our best practices that you can do in five minutes to fix challenges that are in your relationship instead of mm -hmm. having it be drawn out. If you're having um, you're intimacy feeling, issues, mm -hmm. we've got if you're something. feeling disconnected, you're not having the conversations. If you're, yeah, you're if not. If you want to spice up your sex life, mm -hmm. any of the things, it's the mm -hmm. five minute fix. So you can just quickly go in five minutes or less and just get things going again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> cool. So that's all part of the relationship bundle. Yeah. Yep. And we can find that at edenworld.org slash Tanya. Yep. Yes. And that way <laughs> You're famous you get now all of website. that. That's special <laughs> for our um, podcast listeners, our sistership circle community. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So um, I love that. I'm glad you brought up the drive-by. This is something that <laughs> I think we get really lazy mm -hmm. and something how it shows up in my relationship is, especially because we're in two different places, is we have a thought mm -hmm. and we call each other, completely interrupt the other person and whatever they're doing, yeah. expecting that other person to be available <laughs> versus actually setting up the time. Um, and so I think that there's two different things here is one is like logistics and taking care of business. Yep, And that doesn't have to be an actual business, but like business of the family, business of yeah, the yeah. relationship. Yeah. And then also having um, that sacred space for maybe there are some emotional things um, mm -hmm. that might be kind of separate, but we yeah. just get so lazy, yeah. you know, and we don't really understand that that's impacting the relationship when we do these drive-bys. It's killing it. It yeah. really is. It's like the little things, they don't say it's the big things that wreck relationships. Sure, you know, infidelity, stuff like that, that can be, those are big things. They do happen. But most the little people- little things that lead to it a yeah, lot of times. Most people are getting divorces and everything mm -hmm. over little things that they did wrong over years that create resentment, create stories, create disconnect. And then you're growing apart instead of growing together. And then when you're this far apart, you can't see each other clearly anymore. And you're like, well, I don't even like this person anymore. Because- all of the little things, because like you said, you're being lazy. Relationships take work. It's not easy. It's not easy to have an amazing relationship like we have. Mm -hmm. It takes dedication. It takes time. Mm -hmm. We have to really put in the effort to do it, mm -hmm. but it's worth it because we can go further together. We, we don't, mm -hmm. one of the things we say is one and one is not two in Eden. One and one is 11 because when your relationship is working, <laughs> It's just quantum. It just, you can just do so much more when you have a solid relationship than you can do on your own, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you have to be connected and then congruent and aligned in order to have that, that quantum. Yeah. And that takes yeah. the day to day. Like we just want, we're like, oh, the relationship should just be so easy. And, you know, and then we're on autopilot and we're not actually creating what we want. So, like, having a conscious marriage, a conscious partnership mm -hmm. takes work, takes practice. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so is there anything like, I mean, you've been together forever, your whole lives, you have a very conscious partnership and marriage. Um, are there any other things that we haven't mentioned so far that, um, that really make it work for the two of you? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing is intentionality on the micro level. Um, and how, what I mean by that is 
you just like a drive by, you can go through your day and move from thing to thing. Like you're moving from your morning to getting ready, from getting ready to breakfast, from breakfast to getting your day started, you know, and then all the things that happen throughout the day to that, you know, lunch meals after that to the night, right? There's a million and different like transitions that happen throughout a day. And the more that we are intentional about those transitions specifically, and we do it through what we call, we we just literally say intention experience, meaning what is the intended experience we would like to have as we move from this moment to that moment or for this, we're getting out of the car, we're about to go in a restaurant with friends we're about to meet. You know, we set many, we call them containers, little containers where we can say, you know what? All right, we're going into this restaurant. Um, I'm really tired tonight, so can we just not get caught up in business talk? And I'd love to be out of here by nine o'clock. And remember, we're on the sugar-free cleanse, so let's not have dessert, right? Like literally, mm-hmm. you set the intention for the experience okay. you're about to have. Like as soon as we hang up in this call, I'm going to turn to her and say intention experience because we have a multitude of different things that we talked about potentially happening after this. There's some new variables that came in that I haven't shared with her yet that might change those things. And we might Uh need to split shifts. We might need to do things together. So I'll say intention experience and we'll go through and figure that out. Yeah. And, and in that intention experience, oftentimes I'll, we'll set out a sketch, like, Whoever usually asks is the one that sort of has an idea of what you want the intention to be. So I'll throw out a sketch. So this is my sketch. I'm going to, what about this, 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 you do this. I'll think about it. That yeah, good. that's great. Or you know what? I'll do that, but I'm going to go do this instead. And are we agreement on that? Okay, yeah, good. Got go. a break. And it's short, but you're naming the things. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I would say two things that are really important for me is um, forgiveness and seeking understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We finally come to the have come to the point where we both know, really know that the other person is doing the best they can to love. I'm doing the best I can to love her and create a life for us that I can mm-hmm. in, in any given moment. And I know that she is too. So anything that gets funky or in the space, it's really, you got to have a forgiving heart. You're, if you're holding on to things, you're just, again, you're creating resentment, you're creating stories, you're creating a growing apart situation. And it's on you. If you're not forgiving and loving and coming back to the table, again, with someone that is worthy of that, mm-hmm. then then it's it's you're doomed. So forgiveness is the one. The second one is I know calendaring isn't sexy, but I, I remember Tony Robbins maybe 15 years ago, I heard from him. He's like, I calendar my sex. And I was like, what you freak? That's so crazy. What would you even do that for? <laughs> and so we calendar our sex now. And like for our sexy time. Yeah. Spontaneity is mm-hmm. a beautiful thing and it works great at the beginning of relationships. And, or if you're cultivating, you know, in, yeah. in between, but. but you can cultivate spontaneity in a calendar. And the more for us, the more we calendar things, the more they are real, the more they exist, the more they actually happen and the more they matter to us. And so I feel like calendaring our lives and treating our relationship in many ways, like a business has been helpful for us as entrepreneurs and that, because we're making sure we've got goals on the things that are most important for us and not just like, oh yeah, that would be nice someday, but we're actually achieving it because we want it and we know that we want it together. And so mm-hmm. calendaring and, and that really, really helps. Mm. Yeah. So good. Calendar mm-hmm. the sex. <laughs> <laughs> if I learned anything. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's so true. I, I teach this in one of our business uh, programs of put it in the existence system. If it, It's not in the calendar. It doesn't exist. If you want to grow your business and you want to do these things and you want to balance the multiple things, you got to put in the calendar. And that's not just for business. It's for the life things as well. And, um, and you can't schedule over those. You know, it's like, if you're going to have a meeting and you're not going to flake on that meeting, same thing for the sex date or the exercise or the whatever. So yeah. 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 Brilliant. I love that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Oh, this was so incredible. Just soaking up all the wisdom from you two who are really embodied in this work. And that's what I just so appreciate and what I, why I wanted you here is um, because you're really working the program. You, everything that you teach, everything that you stand for, the two of you are the living experience of that. Uh, and, and thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing. 
Um, yeah. So is there anything else as we're kind of wrapping up here that you, that we've missed? I don't know if you missed it, but when, when you said, um, said when you just shared that, and again, thank you for that reflection. It, mm -hmm. it means a lot to us because, um, I very much appreciate who you are as well and how you hold yourself and how you run your community and your business and how you just go about life. Mm -hmm. Um, so it means a lot coming from you. What I love about Eden and our community is although Sierra and I are the founders and, and we're often on stage a lot, it, it really is peer to peer. Like no one gets out alive. Like it doesn't matter how much money you have, life. how much this, mm. like of a relationship, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone starts in all the same places in relationship. Like it doesn't oh. matter who you are, how you do it. So what's beautiful about our community is like, we're not gurus. We're not this, we're all equal growing and learning together as beloveds caring for one another. And that's what's a unique and beautiful thing about our space is that we're all equals figuring this relationship thing yeah, out. Nobody's together. really got it figured out. We've just figured out. <laughs> I got a couple things. A few <laughs> things. And then together, there's a lot more things that we can, you know, that can support us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One plus one is 11. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you attract some incredible couples. And so mm -hmm. I think for someone who's really wanting to upgrade their marriage, um, they're wanting more of that conscious partnership. And, um, you know, they're really wanting their man to come along. This is the place where when it's who you're surrounded with is who you're going to be like. And so when you're surrounded with yeah. such powerful couples who are really doing the work together, you're just, you're going to grow. It's just yeah. uh, yep. inevitable, it's really. Inevitable. Yeah. yeah Success <laughs> is inevitable in Eden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. I love that. Thank you, friends. Thank you. So grateful you. for you. Thanks for sharing all your wisdom. And mm -hmm. thank you, sisters, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time on the next Brave Woman podcast. You just listened to this show. I'd love for you to leave the Brave Woman podcast an honest review. Reviews help podcasts like this one grow, making it more possible for me to devote my time, energy, and money to its production. If you take a screenshot of your review and email it to support at sistershipcircle.com, we'll send you one of our archetype activations as a thank you gift. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Up next, we're wrapping up season five with a solo cast about getting the lessons from uncomfortable circumstances, transitions, and a prayer for more fun and play. Join me for a heartfelt final episode.